It's going to be great execution. It's going to be fun to watch. Notre Dame rides in on a four-game winning streak after the opening loss to North Carolina. Toledo lost at Valpo and have won three straight. Something's got to give tonight. Two red-hot teams ready to tip it off at South Bend. Toledo in gold, Notre Dame in white. Our officials tonight, Brian Dorsey, Lamar Simpson, and Alfred Smith. Durham and Kanapke get us started, and it's Notre Dame who controls the tip-off. John Mooney back into his starting lineup. Last time he was on the court, we told you career high 28 points. But this Irish offense by no means is one dimensional. No, but he provides that stability. You'll see how it starts with him. He's a gifted passer. As you see in the sequence, he finds shots for teammates because of the defense. Stolen away. Marion Jackson, a steal and a score to open. Right place, right time for Jackson as he gets an early two to establish himself, get him going. Here's Pfluger, lines it up, Durham puts it away, Jawan Durham. Big. Solid field, probing dribbles from Pfluger, attracts the defense, leaves it up in the air for the high-flying acrobat that is Jawan Durham. At 6'11", the senior Durham can go and get it anywhere near the rim. Toledo goes inside, they're big, Luke Kanapke, kick out, it goes begging from Willie Jackson. Side to Durham. Can't cash in this time. My game will have a feel of kind of a men's league game. These guys are grown men, mostly all upperclassmen between these two teams on the court. Early shots from a Toledo team that likes to fill it up. A lot of gifted players on the floor that are good with the ball and hunt their shot. DJ Gibbs tries a three. That's off the mark. Well, Toledo, this is a team that's capable of scoring in bunches. They're coming off at a 112-point performance. Jackson misses the most points this team has scored in 26 years. And you can tell they're still feeling that confidence and momentum from it. You're not guarding for long here in the half-court setting if you're the Irish. Notre Dame just trying to find their foot offensively to start this game. Here's Prentice Hub into the lane, and again, right back to Juwan. Drive and kick. Get in the lane, kick for a three point shot. Tonight, in these few sequences, it's been get in the lane and leave it upstairs for the big fella to punctuate. Those are the best ones to put away. <laughs> I didn't do very much of that. <laughs> Kanapke contested at the rim, follows his shot, and it's blocked away. John. The Irish look to run. Fluger a three. He's got it. Notre Dame on a 7-0 run after the Rex Fluger triple. Dylan Anderson in the spin cycle. Gets nothing but air. Kanapke can't finish it. Blocked two times. And with one second on the shot clock. Been put away by Spencer Littleson. The big fella Kanapke for Toledo is below the rim with his activity, struggling to get his shot off against the length and athleticism of the Irish interior. But Toledo doesn't give up on the play to generate some offense. It's been a great big man battle so far this game. Fluger takes it around every. Jackson hard to the hole, comes up empty. Into John Mooney. Looking to go to work. Fires and hits. That is the John Mooney that has put him in the all ACC first team conversation. Could score at will. A terrific mid range game. 
and so dynamic in how he does it. So there's no personnel tailored to guard him and do it effectively. Jackson puts up a three and it rattles home. Martin showing off a sweet stroke. And giving you a taste of who Toledo is offensively, a team that shoots, are you ready for this? 47% from beyond the arc. And both teams, they don't let the shot clock tick away. They go in attack mode early. Oxygen. Jawan Durham shot comes up with nothing. Jackson floater in the lane. He's starting to feel it. Marion Jackson ties line. The junior with seven of the Rockets nine to start this game. Durham calling for it inside. They go for it again. This time, can't connect twice earlier this opening sequence. Great tip. Two on two. Gibbs, pull up, pop. Rattles in. Going back and forth. A lot of skilled players on the floor that are very confident making things happen with the ball in their hands. A cerebral move in the open floor from Gibbs. Inside, Kanapke. Durham thought he got a block. Instead, I think they called Mooney with the body. We get our first whistle of the game. It's been back and forth. Back and forth indeed. Hub delivers to Durham, and he finishes life above the rim. So good. Let's take a second look at it. On the other end, though, going to play Marion Jackson with the floater. her name guys is that is that a disruption to you my throat with me cutting the cough button so much I hope not I don't okay, think I good. can hear you if it's cough yeah good. that's what I thought it's a battle over here so Jackson's got seven and nine yep school and and he told us before the game he really likes this game as they start looking ahead to conference play a veteran team that'll really test his group today yeah coach understands the challenge that the Rockets present in this building a lot of people don't want to play a team like Toledo because you hear the name you're like, oh you're expected to win this one just done with this squad Kowalczyk is unbelievable in his 10 years he's made this team a dominant force within the every year in that West Division you say Okay, it's going to be Toledo and who else as of late because of what he's been able to do with skilled players and really light up a scoreboard. Great floater off the glass. The one thing escaping Todd Kowalczyk in Toledo is that trip to the, to the dance NCAA tournament. They haven't been since 1980, but this is the year that Toledo feels like they've got a great shot to win the MAC. They put themselves in some dancing shoes come March. They've accounted for themselves very well to start this game. Marion Jackson. That one goes begging. Let me tell you, that's not a bad shot, Jay. The guy's shooting better than 40% from the three-point line. He's earned it. He's got that deep range. He's already knocked one down from there. So some may turn on the TV and go, no, not a good shot. Wrong. Within this offense, again, going back to how many gifted players are on that ball, on that team that can shoot it. It's a good look. Open three off the mark, and that's room for Nate Lyshevsky. Two of 17 now from the three-point line, where in high school he set his school record for threes. And that's a head-scratcher because they've got next-level scouts intrigued by this young man because of his size and ability to shoot it beyond the arc. So it right now maybe a little mental as a struggle starting to mount beyond the arc. After a quick start, up-tempo, both teams settling in. Missing the last couple of shots. Now what will stay with the Irish underneath. But I like the sequence from Lashevsky right there. Can't get the three-point shot going. Let's be active without the basketball. Screening, cutting, factor, and a piece, despite the fact I can't get my shot to go right now. Well, Mike Bray said Lashevsky has done so many good things other than make the three. He knows that'll come. It's been great on a backboard. He's been tough as a defender, a rim protector. Finding a way. 
This time taking it tough to the hole, getting some contact and still. Great example right there. At 6'10", putting it on the deck, finishing like a like a two or three on the perimeter. It's where the game is gone. Positionless pieces. Coach Bray boasts several on this Irish squad. The Maron Jackson show continues, this time passing out to a three. Can't hit it. And there's Leshevsky on the boards getting fouled. He's been really active in the last minute. Leshevsky, we talked about making contributions when the natural part of your game doesn't come. Three point shot, not there. Attack the closeout. It's my guy. You play with him? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Nine, <laughs> the Sweet 16. Notre Dame won the game by eight. And Toledo, they made the tournament the next year, have not been back to the dance. For Notre Dame, they move on to the Sweet 16, and they get bounced by Magic Johnson. And there's the guy right there, the legend, Digger Phelps. Without him, there is no Notre Dame basketball. They were an absolute heavyweight, must-see television back in a time where not a lot of teams showed up. Four future NBA players on that roster, because Coach could recruit Kelly Trapuca, Bill Lambeer, Orlando Woolridge, and Bill Hanslick, and Kelly Trapuca. His jersey is going to be in the rafters here at some point this season. They will honor him, so very impressive 79 team. The one problem for that team is Notre Dame gets the shot clock reset. New rule, only 20 seconds on your second opportunity. Hub of three is fires. Magic Johnson, way for that 1979 I mean, team. We were talking with some Notre Dame folks before the game. They said... That team was a Final Four team, no doubt about it. One of the best they've ever had here at South Bend as Notre Dame draws the charge. The problem is you ran into a buzzsaw called Magic. And one of the names you don't mention when you talk about Notre Dame years of the past in the tournament is Magic. Danny Ainge is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's what happens Diggers on time. the flip phone? The guy does whatever he wants. It's a legend. It's Digger Phelps. We got to get Digger Phelps on an iPhone. His better half right there, Linda. That's who they probably really wanted to talk to on the phone as he passes it over. <laughs> you think somebody <laughs> called him and said, Digger, they're talking about 1979? <laughs> Maybe it's Bill Walton on the horn. <laughs> Reminiscent from the UCLA 88 game win streak that was no longer. Five on the timer. Trying to get it into Durham. Back door left open. One second yeah! on the shot clock. And Leshevsky could not get it off. Shot clock violation. Well, Mike Bray told us against this Toledo offense that just put up 112 points in their last performance, it would be a great litmus test for this year's defense. Yeah, because of the command, the demand, I would Offense for Toledo, you got to close out at the three-point line. You got to protect against drives. It's a good passing team. Notre Dame has done the job so far defensively, taking away the three-point line. After a hot start, both teams gone cold, especially this Toledo team. Four minutes without a field goal now, trying to get something going offensively. How is Notre Dame taking them out of their rhythm? They are pressed up defensively on that three-point line. They are helping when it goes down low to the big fella. That's the first clean look and without a bunch of defenders swarming to try and make him make a decision, which is time and time has been a shot block. So maybe they can find a rhythm playing through the big fella down low. Oh, um, step back three rattles out. Neither team really getting anything going from the three-point line as that weapon has been taken away. Foul on the floor. It's been a great big man battle so far tonight, Jordan. Big man can't do it himself. He needs a guard that can deliver the basketball. The proper angles. Kanapke shows a dominant left hand. Catches out with the space. There is no help side defense to make a play because after that entry is thrown, that side of the court for Kanapke to do his thing. And again, another offensively gifted guy who can deliver.
Looking inside again, that one home. Perfect timing coming off it. A poor entry pass. Big man can't make a play there. You got to get it to him. Gave him no chance. On the floor, Notre Dame wants an and one. It was a great take by Robbie Carmody. Notre Dame fans happy to see the sophomore back in the lineup. He was held out in concussion protocol on Monday night. Another look. He is a tough young man off the perimeter right there. 6'4", physical guy, gets to the rim. What's the and one? Should have been a continuation at and one. That was a close call. Moody left open, can't do that. You'll usually make you pay, but not that. Second opportunity with Willie Jackson, Garner nearly 11 boards a game. Dylan Alderson tried to give Toledo the lead. Knapke's fighting underneath, couldn't haul in that rebound, but he's been tough to deal with. Toledo has had stretches of this game. They've missed eight straight field goals, five straight field goals, and yet you look at the score, only down by two on the road. They're competing. Again, you're looking at two teams here that are so similar, but two teams that are so well coached that they're taking away some of the identity of the opponent. Both teams like to make it work from the three-point line and hurt you there. That's been eliminated from both sides. So these teams are trying to find other ways. Fitz Kerr. And the Irish, they've gone into a shooting slump, one of their last nine. But it's opened the door for Toledo. A three to take the lead. Iron unkind there. That's Spencer Littleson. He's shooting 55% from the three-point line. That is not an error. 55%. So he gets a look like that. That just goes to show you how out of rhythm these offenses are currently. Now he came into the season being the defensive specialist, and he has started the season averaging 16 points a game. Man, it is just not going, Desky. He's now two of 18 from three. Jay, get out there, take the lid off the basket, please. <laughs> Make yourself useful in this Brock. You can reach it, I can. <laughs> oh, man. Both of these teams, it was a red hot start, and now they can't get anything going. Notre Dame has missed eight straight field goals, zero points in the last four minutes. Maybe some offense when we come back. I was just going to take, but you're good. My bad, my bad. I like the 79 talk, and Digger on the flip phone was just That was awesome. awesome. Yeah. UNESCO. Oh my goodness, the teams are combined for a two, two of their last 18. We were sold this would be an offensive yeah. game. <coughs> I think we had more points in the opening like three minutes than we have since. I don't know what it is. I mean, both teams are just shooting a ton. 42 shots already. Yeah. All fans across the country and the world, thank you, Sabrina, for coming back for your senior season. And we get to enjoy it all. And on ACC Network versus Syracuse. That starts a doubleheader on Sunday at 4, followed up by the second-ranked team of the country, Chris Mack, Jordan Wara, and the Louisville Cardinals. Ah. Gone into a slump out of nowhere. These two teams on a hot start now. Two of their last 18 combined from the floor. Great extra pass. And yet still can't hit anything. Two Rex of nine things. Rex gets the steal defensively, makes the extra pass, just can't convert right now. And one on the other end. That's exactly what Toledo needed, and they go to the senior, Willie Jackson. That's who Willie Jackson is. He's a dirty guy. He's very skilled, but sets a screen. Dive guy, rewarded from his point guard. Flexes off. Steps to the line to complete the three-point play. Started his college career at Missouri. Figured out halfway through his freshman year was not the place for him. Decided to come closer to home. 
Born and raised in Cleveland, it has really found a great spot here at Toledo. Guy, it's a big part of what this team does, knows his role, said, if I could score 20 points or grab 20 rebounds, I'd rather grab 20 rebounds. It's the kind of guys you want to play with. John's return from missing Monday after a stomach virus. Kind of been out of sorts in this first half. Misdirection from Jackson. Oh, right. It's a goal ten. That is a goal ten. And Willie Jackson saying that's my bad because Marion Jackson didn't need the help. But I think Marion Jackson might have been trying to pass that. And it just hovered so <laughs> look. Yeah, he, I think he was trying to pass that. Yeah, he was. And it ended up being what was going to be a, a, a successful shot attempt. Those two are high school teammates, by the way. Both played at Garfield High in Ohio. Now reconnected at Toledo. You would think at this point you played, what, seven years together? <laughs> well, the old guy who's passing it doesn't know that it's supposed to be a pass. How's the other guy supposed to know what's going on? <laughs> exactly. Tied at 15, trying to change that. Off the mark again. You got to keep on shooting. I mean, that's the that's oh. Those shots typically fall. Leshevsky is in a terrible slump. But you can't abandon what you do. The sophomore is now 2 of 19 from 3. If you were a teammate of him, what would you tell him? Exactly what Coach Bray is telling him. Keep shooting that thing. Mm -hmm. That's who you are. We brought you in here. 6'10 finesse guy with the stroke. What I most admired is he started to be impactful in other ways. Coaches raved about his defense. Raved how he's been on a backboard. That stroke's going to come. But the only way it does is the repetition. Keep taking them. The numbers will start to, they'll start to fall. What's funny is in practice, 40 in a row. Same court, same rim. Tree falls and nobody's around, though. Yep. Does it really fall, Jay? You know what I mean? Tough take away. Marion Jackson taking two guys on and finishing at the rack. It's a like with that young man's game. Active hands, translates to defense, and some offense. Notre Dame answers immediately back the other way. This Heady play from the Irish to get right back. You had the letdown. But you're in pursuit of early offense going the other way, playing downhill. Carmody with the clapback. Marion Jackson with nine of Toledo's 17. Extra pass to Anderson. And a charge called. Great hustle. And again, it's Nate Lecheski. He's not knocking down the three, but he's taking. I can't run as fast as Jackson is here with the basketball. You blink, he's gone. A rip through Euro step of sorts. I mean, look at the finish comes from his eyes. Never leave, despite the traffic, the goal to lay that thing off the glass. You're looking at 18 points per game. It's a confident score. Who's carrying his team right now in an efficient clip, might I add. Big players, big games, and he has established himself as a MAC Player of the Year candidate, certainly. Fluger in the lane, throws it up. Leshevsky's there. Fouled, and he'll head to the line. It's a part of Leshevsky's game I didn't know he had. And we were just talking about it a few plays back. Really come to the forefront. And those are guys I'm most impressed with. The easy way, the most comfortable way that you have success isn't, isn't coming. So what are you going to do? Misdirect, find another path, and make yourself a player on the court. Leshevsky doing that on the backboard through toughness. And you really don't get the sense that he's pressing at all. I mean, he's just taking open shots, doing the little things. I don't think the three-point slump has affected him in any way. I'm sure internally it has, but it hasn't really showed up to other mistakes outside of just missing a shot. Yeah, and a lot of, a lot of young kids now, these 18 to 22-year-olds, the shot's not falling, that's all they think about. They obsess over it. It impacts their game negatively in that domino effect. Nate is not one of those young men playing resilient despite the fact that stroke is not there currently. Keyshawn Sanders. Quick the other way to Carmody. He's had a couple finishes in transition away cheaply. It's a poor decision. Carmody didn't know what he wanted to do with it, put himself in a terrible position. Willie Jackson, mid-range game, takes a bounce in, and we're tied at 19. A whistle after the make. got somebody down on the other side yeah. it looks like it's might be Carmody down on yeah, the floor Robbie Carmody, Robbie Carmody the that's holding shoulder. his left shoulder 
plagued him a season ago. You hate to see that. Him and who he is, and showed great signs early last season, then goes down with the shoulder. You hope it's minor. You'd hate to see another setback for a young man who's starting to find his groove and confidence this season as well. Prentice Hub. Notre Dame trying to to a lead. Both teams have really been cold though. Toledo, they're shooting 47% from three coming into the game. One of ten from deep. Spinning for a double team, lost the ball. And both officials right on it immediately. Notre Dame basketball. But again, understanding personnel and paying attention to the scouting report. Littleson is shooting 55% from the three-point line. Mm -hmm. Defensively, there's an emphasis for the iron off that three-point line. It muddies itself up a little bit when he's trying to spin move, use it off the bounce, and it equates to a turnover. That is exactly what Notre Dame wants. Well, speaking to Mike Bray pregame, he was like, this is going to be a really tough test for our defense. Thrilled with 19 points in this first half. It's the offense that has let the Irish down tonight. Marion Jackson into Kanapke. One on one. Senior muscles his way home. Didn't move from Kanapke. Understanding his size, 6'11", maybe has an inch advantage, but patient, finishes with the offhand. Very skilled with both hands and over both shoulders. Step back three, and again, the Sawashevsky misses. He's now 0 for 4 in the game from three, and 2 of 20 on the season. Looking inside, tough take. Chris Willie Jackson inside. Willie Jackson just snuck in, carved out a little bit of real estate right there. Loitering on that low block and rewarded. The Irish got to find rhythm. One of their last 16 here on the offensive side of things. How would you fix it? Got to get it to John Moody, who's not in the game right now. Tough to do when he's on the bench. And that's what you're discovering about the Irish. This doesn't know how to generate things without John Moody on the floor. They struggled mightily last game, and Jawan Durham picked them up enough around other guys, too. This team is not a consistent threat on the offensive side without Moody in the game. Triple team coming in on Kanapke and a jump ball. It'll stay with Toledo. Tomorrow, week 13, college football doubleheader right here on the eight Network. Syracuse visits a now ball eligible Louisville team, kicking things off at 4 o'clock. And then afterwards, ACC Network primetime football presented by Geico, Wake Forest, and Duke. Last time those two played, it was all Demon Deacons, a 59 7 win. That was in Durham. Five seconds on the shot clock. Kanapke, one on the timer, has to let it fly, and it goes to now on an 8 nothing run. John Moody with those two fouls. The Irish are just trying to get to the half. Largest lead of the game for the Rockets, looking for more, and Jackson, a little too aggressive, called for the personal foul. Jay, when you recruit skilled players, you're 6'11 to do this. That's a head fake on an interior defender, Durham, who's not comfortable guarding that high out. Your big becomes a guard, and that's what Kanapke brings. He's not going to rise and dunk it over you, but he's a capable three-point shooter. You can, that allows him to attack the closeout, finish with his offhand at the rim. You can't teach that from a 6'11 big. Shooting one and one, the sophomore Prentice Hub. When you can't make any field goals, you can try and get some points at the foul line. Notre Dame, one of their last 17. They have gone completely cold, including from the... And you can see it in the body language now. Notre Dame is on their heels in attack mode, playing downhill. The Toledo Rockets. Stolen away, maybe fence into their best offense but can't get it up the court quickly enough for a transition look. Pfluger, great head fake. Leads to a three. Hits it! Dwayne Gooden with a much needed three. A who Rex Pfluger is to the Irish. Defensively gets the steal, makes a beautiful pass to set up Goodwin to knock it down.
You've got to lean on your old guys. The grad student makes a play for the Irish, gives them a little bit of juice. Can they get a stop? The senior Willie Jackson answers, saying, hey, Toledo. It's a tough matchup. Willie Jackson is an undersized power forward, low center of gravity, explosive, and very comfortable putting it on the deck. Five seconds separating the shot clock for 8 o'clock Eastern time on Friday, and then right before kickoff, Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Some great games, including here in South Bend, Boston College taking on Notre Dame, Pitt against Virginia Tech. That is a critical coastal clash on ESPN2 Saturday. You mean A.J. Dillon taking on Notre Dame? Yeah. That man has had to shoulder the load for that Boston College team, an absolute workhorse. Gibbs fouled. It will head to the line for two. Coming into this game, we thought Toledo had a good chance to give the Irish a really competitive game. The thing is, we thought they'd be doing it with making threes. They've only made one triple tonight, and yet they lead by five. Yeah, they've been active. They've been high-level pressure up in guys when Notre Dame makes that catch. Nothing's comfortable. They've been able to generate some turnovers. The Rockets have been able to pursue early offense transition opportunities. They're playing fast. And because they're playing fast, it's been able to mask the futility from the three-point line. Notre Dame hasn't had that same ability. They haven't been able to generate the stops that have allowed them to run to mask their inability to knock down threes. You've only made two of your last 20 shots, and yet you're only trailing by three. But when you're missing... Come in to an ACC arena, playing a great team in Notre Dame, and they have been fearless all first half. This team won 25 games last year, Toledo. This is a team that wants to take the next step, and that is to the tournament. Games like this, these challenges, and for them, ideally, a win would go a long way. There's a ton of game left. Have not been to the big dance. 1980. Trying to change that. Marion Jackson right on pace. He's averages get one 18 here. and 8. He's got to get one here. It's going to be him. Fires it to end the first half. That one way off the mark, and that will do it. Toledo, 20 minutes down, 20 to go. Takes a three point lead into halftime. So this Irish team now allows John Mooney to come back in the second half. You must establish him right away. Notre Dame has to find a way to bring back some in season if they can hang on to this lead. Absolutely. The fight is in his team as well right now. Into John Mooney. Irish have to find a way to get him going. And they do on the first. It's big. The guy has been rhythmless for a game and a half now. Out with the illness last game. Foul trouble in the first half. He needs to be established early and often for the Irish. Last time he was on the court, he had a career-high 28 points. In the first half, he only had two points. So he matches that total with his first shot in the second half. And if I'm the Rockets, I'm going back to Kanaki to challenge the big fella and how he defends Moody. Try to get him back in foul trouble. Moody, a gifted crack. score. Mooney, hard to the hole, up and in, back-to-back -back buckets for John Mooney. A whistle came in after the make, and they call a foul against John Mooney. I think it might have been a delay of game. And that's important, because oh, that's his third. They are going to call the foul. Wow, they are going to call yeah, the foul. That's his third foul, so after two up in the scoring here in the second half, and give Notre Dame the lead, you do have three fouls to worry about. And if I'm Coach Bray, I think I gotta keep him in. Oh, absolutely. Coming in and Jawan Durham got a piece. It's all he needed to deny Toledo. TJ Gibbs. And this is the offense Mike Bray envisioned. Notre Dame on a 9-0 run going back to the end of the first half. And clarification, that is not a foul on John Mooney. You were correct, Jordan, a delay of game. So he's just a two. Rimming out. To... I go right back down to Mooney. That's a great pass. The finish, not there.
Anderson in attack mode. Got a bad angle of that shot, but it will stay with Toledo. And here was the confusion, uh, but more importantly, the offensive execution. Willie Jackson's going to cheat right here, try and get a steal. And now right here, that simple let go of the basketball, which is, I think, an overly sensitive yeah, that reaction is overly, for delay of game. Yeah. He got caught up with the ball and was trying to give it back to the opposition. But it's a warning and a fair one, better than what was ultimately what we thought might have been a well, foul. Well, it was announced Way better off that Purcell way. Pavilion as his I think third that's foul. what they're correcting. And they're still having discussions at the scorer's table because when the PA announces it, the fans are going to react, but now a correction. And all smiles from John. Yeah, he, he gives him a thumbs up. And a four-point Notre Dame lead. They've been hot to start this second half. Toledo trying to respond for Willie Jackson. Out to his high school teammate, Marion Jackson. Step back, pop. No good. Battle for the board. And it'll stay with the Rockets underneath. That's what Willie Jackson brings. An unrelenting rebound, second chance opportunities. Aggressively in pursuit every time a shot goes up from a teammate. Luke Kanapke, another senior they relied on, and he drills it. That's to lead a 7 0 Notre Dame run to start this second half. Right back to Mooney. Why not? He's been the go to guy. This time passing out for a three. Hub rattles in and out. Jackson, electric speed, draws the foul, and he will head to the foul line with an opportunity to tie this game. And at some point, the Irish got to understand. Marion goes with a full head of steam at the rim. And when he does that, he becomes very susceptible to a potential charge. The Irish you know, get in there, get in position, anticipate, offer their body up to the basketball guards, and earn a turnover by taking that charge. I have control in a lot of these drives. Very skilled player, very productive, but at times a little dangerous in how he goes at the rim and puts himself in position. Notre Dame needs to take advantage defensively. Is it one of those things where he only knows one speed? Yeah, which makes him effective, but can also be counterproductive. Swatted out and offered Toledo back the lead, but Jackson could not finish. Gibbs lost the handle. Toledo comes away with it, and a foul comes in, and it's against the senior Gibbs. Yeah, Gibbs, that was comedy of errors, trying to play too fast on the catch. Wanted to make a move, but you got to wait till you control the ball to do so. And he chases down, it ultimately prevents the fast break, but the foul. And now both head coaches discussing with the official at midcourt. I think Todd Kowalczyk was just questioning the intent of the foul. I, I do believe that might be, and they might go to replay. Yeah, the officials are going to look this over it was a frustration foul you've been there yeah they're gonna well they're gonna try and figure out if it was deliberate and impeding what would be an easy basket going the other way and we are just told the official review don't listen to us <laughs> it is to check the shot clock currently at 15 seconds and in this stoppage not a bad time to kind of regroup. It's been up and down in these first few minutes. Catch your breath. Re-identify what the game plan is. Get back to playing. Let's move. And yeah, the shot clock goes to 28 seconds. And we're back in play. Luke Knapp for Toledo. 
Jackson drains the three. Marion fires Toledo back in front. Jackson and Kanapke both in double figures. The Irish have no answer for those two guys right now. Maybe here's your answer. Mooney just could drop. Surprise both defenders chase Goodwin and leave an all-conference performer for three, but they dodge a bullet. Kanapke in perfect position to finish to bail out the missed three. And that's a double-double for Kanapke. Luke Kanapke has been the guy for Toledo, a senior on the road. They're 2 of 13, and yet they lead on the road. They're out tough in Notre Dame right now, too, beating them on second-chance opportunities, getting on the offensive backcourt. Five offensive rebounds in these five minutes in the second half to give them 10 for the game. The fight with the Rockets is evident currently. Triple teamed underneath. Marion Jackson got there for a jump ball. The Irish started the second half really positively. A 7-0 run, but Toledo punched right back. An 8-0 run for the Rockets to regain the lead. And if I'm Toledo, I'm becoming a little bit more bright. We're see John Mooney on the bench. And a Notre Dame team that goes through spells of an inability to score the ball without their go-to guys. So Toledo might be thinking, let's build here. Stolen away. Gibbs. He's been quiet tonight. Notre Dame looking for somebody to step up. Leshevsky. Big time make, and he goes finally. Big X, his first three of the night. And Coach Bray, huge smile. The bench relieved. Could that be the turn for Leshevsky? Back the other way. Toledo, like a. Just will not go away. <laughs> Hub trying to pick up the tempo, maybe a little too quick there. Poked down from behind. The sophomore getting back on defense. Bad decision. All right now. And Goodwin needs to understand right there. I don't have an advantage. Let's reset, run some offense, see what we can get. Foul called off the ball. Marion Jackson. Mario Jackson is an agitator, man. And I don't mean that in the negative sense. I just mean he applies pressure when he has the ball, when he doesn't, when he's defending, when he's on offense right here. I don't even know how much contact there was, to be honest, enough to draw a whistle. Because Jackson sold it. Would, would that go into the flop call, potentially? It could. I mean, New rule here? Don't even get me started on a flop okay, call. Okay, we won't. you can literally <laughs> interpret anything to be up for review. That's going to become more and more problematic. I don't want to digress too far with the action. Goal. Speaking of Notre Dame, Luke Kanapke, the senior leading scorer for Toledo right now, just continues to get what he wants inside. Mooney back on the floor trying to answer. TJ gives a three. Can't connect. Coach Kowalczyk's squad, he does level athletes, but he recruits high-level skill. And again, Kanapke, so gifted going over either shoulder, so cerebral with his moves, but the understanding of space is his touches. It eliminates the ability for help side to come because they clear out that side of the ball, and he delivers. And yeah, Mike Bray calling on You got to speed it up. I like pressure. this. Got to apply some pressure, take Toledo out of their comfort zone, try to pick up the pace here. Toledo's unafraid, though. They have not backed down. The senior, Willie Jackson. Hard to the hole. Lost the handle. Blocked away. Can push the tempo. Gibbs went into attack mode. Could not finish. Back in that 2 3 zone here. Toledo can really shoot it. Off the mark that time from Spence. And I think there's a confidence with Coach Bray's squad to move to the zone, 
to switch up looks, confuse Toledo a little bit. Toledo naturally a good shooting three-point team, but struggling tonight, which allows Coach Bray to kind of consider more 2-3 zone. Irish only shooting 31% from the floor. Another scoring drought that's gone nearly three minutes here. Shot clock down to five. Gibbs, two on the timer, has to let it fly. A foul called, and the officials say it was on the floor. Shot clock resets to 20. As Spencer Littleson picks up his third foul. He's been a really tough defender. Yeah, and, and a guy who's been billed as a shooter, but also an aggressive, tough, pesky defender. A lot of fight in these Rockets. Again, more 2-3 zone from Notre Dame here. Going to have to be aware of shooters. Kanapke, despite his size, is one of them. And he... A seven-point lead now for Toledo. Fluger. And that is a zero-pass possession. What Mike Bray wants from this offense. It's a 14-3 run for Toledo. Rockets looking for more. Notre Dame. You can't score an half-court setting. You got to look for some easy ones. Get out and go. The sophomore again. Dane Goodwin drills it. That initial thrust gives you a cleaner look than you've had. In rhythm, some momentum. Big for the Irish. Wakes this Purcell Pavilion crowd up a little bit. Kanapke trying to stay hot. Can't knock it down. If you're the Irish. Luger decides not to push the tempo this time. Goodwin, another triple. He's got it! Back-to-back -back threes for Dane Goodwin! Timeout to Lido. Country, Louisville taking on Akron on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. He's Jordan Cornette. I'm Jay Alter. The Toledo lead of seven down to one after back-to-back -back Dane Goodwin threes. Right out of the timeout, the Rockets answer, and it's Dylan. Here's the three. He doesn't take a lot of them. Three of six on the season. But it almost looked like that was a pin down screen to get him a look. Goodwin stays hot. He has the last eight for the. Gotta find him ways to get the ball now. You haven't found any consistent threat. You gotta latch on to a guy who's delivered your last three baskets, two from beyond the arc. Another three. It's good! And Saunders drains it. I'll tell you. Coach Kowalczyk probably in that huddle said, hey guys, they're going to play this zone. We came in this game shooting 47% for three. Let's make them pay. And they responded. Great hustle. Somehow, someway, kept alive and a timeout taken by Toledo. What a heads up play by Marion Jackson. Toledo, five point lead. Wait, wait, wait. Jay Alter, we got some off. I'm Jay Alter. The offense has finally showed up. It was a defensive battle in the first half, but Toledo, they made three of their last six threes. Yeah, well, this Toledo team saw the zone from the Irish and said, okay, we're going to start dialing down from distance. The Irish are just a man, but can they get some stops? Kanapke, but Fluger has it. Irish into Mooney. Kick out, a three, the hot hand, it continues. What an impressive showing from the sophomore. You can see the confidence building. Goodwin has all 11 of the last Notre Dame points. Run that man off the screen. Get the touch. Oh. Mooney says, my turn. Blocked from behind. Back to deny. Got to get back and protect the goal. Jackson is coming. Into attack mode quickly with a foul on the floor. You know what Jackson's going to do. Downhill. These are the winning plays that Rex Fluger makes for the Irish. He ain't going to give you 25 a night, but he'll win you games with that. And then again, 
Dane Goodwin feels good. Do it again, young fella. Don't hit hard. That right hand is hot. Don't high five. I had a teammate in Danny Miller got hot in this round of 32 versus Illinois in 2003. Would not let anybody high five that right hand. He was feeling too good. Mike Bray leaves Prentice Hub on the floor with four fouls and more than eight minutes to go. Travel call, it'll be Irish basketball. Those were not the numbers we thought we'd settle on here with eight and a half minutes left to play. Not with the start from the Irish, but Goodwin has been a hot hand and he's finding ways to make himself available for clean catch and shoot looks. A great example of the experience this freshman class got a year ago. Yes, they struggled through the season, but they've got minutes in them and for a tough test like they have tonight, they are battle tested. Another three. Rims out that time. It's a good looking shot though for the Irish. They'll live with that despite Leshevsky's struggles from three. They still want those kind of shots. Deep three. Jackson. Too much on it. Toledo clinging to this two point advantage. Run some clock here, make them guard you. Gibbs, a triple. Can't connect. A click hit it, but at the same time, make them work to guard. There, there is guys on this floor that have breakdowns defensively. Both Jacksons at times can make the greedy play, and you can beat them in that regard. And it's those two in a two-man game right now. Eight on the timer. Tough defense from Fluger. Marion Jackson passes off. Kanapke can't get the drop. There's got to be a red awareness defensively for Toledo. I imagine they're going to try and fight through everything and switch to keep Goodwin from getting a touch. After a lot of made baskets between these two teams, we've now seen a scoring drought go longer than two minutes. It'll be a battle to the finish. Toledo leading by two. They got to find ways to get him touches. Mooney back on the bench. There is no double figure scorer in this game for the Irish except for Goodwin. Got to establish him throughout here and ride him. He's Jordan Cornette. I'm Jay Alter. Under seven minutes to play, and Toledo clinging to a two point advantage. Goodwin, a double team, comes in immediately. They will not give 23 and White any space down the stretch. Well, they gave him an inch there. Guys, though. Willie Jackson was face guarding, and because of the face guard, it allowed Rex Fluger to slide the pass in with Willie unknowing. Corner three. Off the mark, following a shot, a second look. Jackson, it's good! Marion Jackson, and the Toledo lead is five. That was the first basket for either team in three minutes. Tough shot, awkward and off balance for Pfluger. It's Toledo basketball. Young when watching, follow your shot, great things happen. And there's a perfect sequence of it as Littleson kicks it out to their star, Jackson, who bangs down the three. Off the ball, pushing and shoving. Oh, double foul here, I think. Now, yeah. let's see who it's called on. There were four players, kind of on the elbow there, all tangled up. Gibbs and Littleson have been competing all game long. Here, down low in the post. Uh oh. Uh -oh. And I, I think they could go to the monitor on this. Littleson. Well, that would be. That would be Littleson's fifth foul. So Spencer Littleson, the junior, would be done for the night. The other foul called against TJ Gibbs. That's his second. The one thing, Jordan, both teams have 
found a rhythm, but they have not been able to sustain that rhythm. You, you really haven't seen one team take momentum in this game and, and really use it. Because neither team is able to consistently do what they typically do, and that's knock down shots at a high clip. Notre Dame traditionally has been that. Last few years have been a struggle in that regard, but Toledo is the second best three-point shooting team in the country and haven't found that consistency. So these teams have had to go outside of what they typically do and find grinder ways to get it done. And it's been, you know, a loose ball, a steal, a deflection, an extra pass. This one's going to come down to a final possession. It's that kind of game. So Littleson out of this game with five fouls. Doesn't matter because Marion Jackson has been the guy. Right to the hole, floater. Notre Dame needs somebody to step up besides Dane Goodwin. The last Irish player to make a basket outside of the sophomore was at the 15.04 mark. It's been 10 minutes. Mooney can't connect. And back to the illness, missing last game. Basketball players creatures of habit and in the foul trouble in the first half for Mooney has now compounded even more of that lack of rhythm and he just can't find his shot. Feet inside off the hands of Saunders Notre Dame basketball. I mean can you believe that Jordan outside of Dane Goodwin. It was Nate Lasheski's three at the 15 0 was the last basket for a fighting Irish player not named Goodwin. Lasheski, another one who's struggling from the three-point line. The pieces are in place for this Irish offense to be gifted, but the shots have to fall from your specialists, and they're not getting that tonight and haven't got it yet this season. The senior TJ Gibbs, great follow, finish from Lasheski. Appreciate the fight, but lacking the punctuation. And John Mooney, after a career-high 28 points against Marshall, only has six points. Back-to-back -back turnovers for Toledo. They've had opportunities to put the Irish away in the second half. They're keeping Notre Dame in this game. And in matchup, going back to Mooney and his struggles, you've got a defender in Luke Kanapke who is comfortable moving his feet on that perimeter and has the size down low to defend Mooney. So Mooney, who's typically a matchup nightmare, has personnel perfectly suited to defend and limit him. They called that against Mooney, and Mike Bray is livid. And a technical wow. foul has come in on Mike Bray. I don't understand that call at all. I've known Coach Bray for 20 years. I've never seen him that hot in the moment reacting to a call. That tells me it's warranted. I've known that man for 20 years. I've never seen him get that worked up. Let's take another. Seemed to me Mooney was the one who got shoved. I I don't know how you call a foul I, I don't know on John Mooney. How? Explanation. That is Sarah. And in that moment, I understand Coach Bray lost his cool, but it's warranted. And if an official sees that they missed the call to that degree, you move away and not compound what's going on. Doesn't make the actions from Coach Wright in the moment. But that was clearly a very missed call. And in 20 years, you said you have not seen I've him never that seen him He's a cool customer, hot under the collar, and for good reason with that call. Well, Marion Jackson made both technical foul shots. Toledo with the basketball and their largest lead of the game. Three seconds, stolen away by Goodwin. Gibbs, transition three, no good. That should be a travel, and yet they're saying it's Toledo basketball. That won't get Mike Bray any more happier with the officials. 
fired up with his team trailing by eight. Coach Bray trying to generate some emotion, some energy with his team. Just flat out unhappy. Gonna be hot. That directly impacts what's going on. You teach your guys not to lose your cool, but you can't fault Coach Bray for having that kind of reaction in that moment for such a poor call on the floor. The players up. Yep. You see your coach get that hot under the collar. It kind of energizes you and say, okay, coach is riding with us. This offense has to find a way to generate something because it's lifeless. Can coach be the catalyst? Have not made a basket in five minutes and 45 seconds. Fluger to Mooney. One on the timer. It's good. They're going to review that. They're going to review it. Did he get it away? And that hitch in Mooney's yeah. shot is so recognizable. It may have cost him on this delivery. We'll get a look on a replay. He might not have gotten it off his fingertips. And you said it, the hitch. Just most that shooters. Millisecond. Yeah, most shooters. It's a fluid stroke. Yeah, it looks like the, yeah, it looks like that's not gonna count. That hitch is ultimately what's gonna be what cost Mooney on now. So the scoring ground continues. Wave off the three-point basket. Notre Dame ice cold, have not scored in nearly six minutes. Calls have gone against the Irish. How do you refocus and win this game in the final three minutes and 20 seconds? Yeah, well, let's take one more look here first, Jay. Is that's a normal release point, but it's that hitch that comes because Booney holds on to that basketball so long. The top left corner where you see the clock, that is what signifies the possession is timed out. It's a violation. Notre Dame just cannot catch a break. Got to continue here. to guard. Makes it more difficult when you don't see the ball going to basket, but you got to dig in. Notre Dame's been strong defensively for the beginning of this season have relied on that it's going to have to carry him here and that's going against Willie Jackson the senior call for the offensive foul and I totally get what you're saying on D at some point in the final three minutes they have to find a way to put the ball in the basket keep in mind Jay Mooney just saw the ball go in the basket that can do a lot for his confidence here reestablishment wide open and Prince Brian Jackson's going to see a lot of high ball screen action and let him create. Fluger got a piece. How about the hustle? Pub is there. And Notre Dame has back-to-back -back baskets. Remember, the grad senior offering his body up to give just enough. And the crowd comes alive. Trying to quiet the crowd. Won't go. Notre Dame basketball. Rex Fluger will not, I repeat, score 25 a night. Fluger will do this every time he steps on the floor. Offer his body up to give the advantage to Hub, who's able to lay it in cleanly. Winning plays. Fluger for the tie. Does not fall. Look, you want him. Move that ball around the perimeter. Microcosm of what the night's been. Failure to finish. Great rebound by Tony. Toledo clinging to a three point lead. Goodwin's been the hot hand. Passing off, though. Mooney calling for it. He gets it. Shoots. Got the look. Make the three. Marion Jackson, the floater, rattles in and out. But his former high school team and bails him out. And the lead is back to five. Willie Jackson, a senior who averages more than 10 rebounds a game, gives him a big one. 
50 seconds left. Goodwin at three. Way off the mark. If you're Notre Dame, you have to foul here, and they do. I'm going to give credit to Marion Jackson here. He gets in, and look how many defenders collapse on him. That allows, because of the aggressive drive, a rebounding opportunity, which Willie Jackson finishes off. Willie Jackson, not game, 10 and a half rebounds per game. A young man who said, I'd rather have 20 rebounds than 20 points in a game. The desire to the forefront there. This is the one and one. That gives Notre Dame life. Three timeouts, decides not to take one. Foul on the floor. Notre Dame not in the bonus yet. What do you want out of the inbounds play? Quick hitter. Extra pass. Gibbs steps into it and hits it. One possession game. Timeout, Mike Bray. Still two remaining. 30 seconds left, and Notre Dame has made it a three-point game. And I like the fact that T.J. Gibbs didn't rush this. He saw the defense. He knows he convert this. It's still a one-possession game. Shot clock is off. Notre Dame needs to be aggressive in pursuit of forcing a turnover, then foul. After our game, all ACC, plenty to talk about as the all ACC team, the, the latest scores, news, and information from around the conference coming up right after us on the ACC network and the ESPN app. Now, Toledo has missed both front ends of the one and one on their last two tries. Notre Dame has to come in with immediate foul if they don't not, get the steal. Not immediate. Yeah, you they have don't a few seconds to flirt with. Getting in a passing lane, it's the Toledo team on the precipice of what would be a huge win for their program. They could get tight here, and in those moments, you're prone to mistake. This is where the Irish need to try to take advantage there. If not, probably have five, six second window, and then you foul. But the first thought is, let's generate a turnover via a double team or shooting into a lane and getting a turnover. Got your double. They gave Fluger. Right place, right time. The ball came right to the fifth year player, and Rex went right up with it and was fouled. And that's why you don't immediately foul. When the win is within reach, and how big of a win it could be, mistakes like this happen. Mario Jackson plays lightning fast. When you play that fast, this kind of things can happen. The roof would have come off Purcell Pavilion if Fluger could have muscled it for an and one. Big Instead, free he gets two. This is the first. Would you have shot it there if you were Rex? Or would yeah, you have everything Rex did was absolutely right. And you still could convert this free throw here and go all over again. You don't need a three. And he does. It's an eternity, 26 seconds. An eternity. Four fouls. Deciding to come out for defense. Same approach here, Jay. Pursuit of the steal first. Give yourself about five seconds, then foul. Don't need a foul yet. Got a trap. Don't need a foul. In trouble. Wow. And another turnover. Notre Dame has ramped up the pressure, and it's paid off for Mike Bray. Luke Kanapke in that moment. All he had to do is call a timeout. Toledo still had one remaining. All you need to do is call a timeout. You realize you're in danger? Call a timeout. You got one left. It's dead call for the offensive foul. Mike Bray takes a timeout. Now Notre Dame with just one timeout remaining. And interestingly enough, Prentice Hub was almost on the verge of fouling, yeah. which would have been a monumental mistake. But he would have fouled out of the game as well. He has four fouls. Last three Toledo possessions missed the front end of a one and one. 
and then a turnover on the inbound and a turnover on the inbound. This is a team that thinks they're capable of getting back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1980. A chance to prove it if they can place. I don't care that Mooney's three to ten. Mooney's got to be the one to decide this year. Shot clock is off. Mooney for the lead. Can't connect. Ball's loose. Jackson has it. And a foul comes in with 11.4 seconds left. And Willie Jackson, the senior, heads to the line for Toledo. 20 of 65 are the Irish from the field. It's been ugly. Seven of that 33rd look for number 33. It doesn't get any better. That is the look you want. That is your best player. That is a conference player of the year candidate who is all alone beyond the arc. And wow, are these free throws big for a 68% free throw shooter and a senior. And that is a massive foul shot. Not only but they can make it a two possession game and it's all on the shoulders of the senior Willie Jackson. No good. Notre is the tie. And a foul comes in. Smart foul from Marion Jackson. That's a well coached group. The wall check squad understanding in that scenario to prevent a three and chaos, you foul and put him to the line. Free throw blockouts are crucial here. If you're Prentice Hub, here. I would prefer that Hub makes both. I think there's enough time here and you still have to a make out. both and foul. I would imagine that's the approach, but it starts with making the first. Rattles in and out, offensive rebound, Mooney. Kick out, get for the tie, Wedgie! What drama with .8 seconds left. A game-tying three gets stuck. Notre Dame with the possession arrow. So the Irish will, will have one final chance, and Mike Bray takes a timeout to talk things over. If you're gonna miss, I guess that's the best way to miss because it gives you possession back, but what an illustration of what the evening has been. Tons of contact there. Marion Jackson. I Surprising there there's no whistle. Call there. Surprising there's no whistle. Great awareness for Moody to kick it out, though. That's a foul. There's no question that's a foul. That's without question. TJ Gibbs is fouled beyond the arm. And, but I've never seen, with the stakes that high, a shot occur, a miss like that. Unbelievable. Notre Dame did have the arrow, though. You what miss it. time for a wedgie. Jay, you, you miss it. It's over. But you miss it like that, you get another chance here. And now there's a second point five left. Not pointing. Yeah, they've added 0.7 seconds back. <laughs> There's no way that could have bounced in at an angle. But don't get lost in the fact that the ball got wedged there. Yes, the optics wild. Gibbs was, was fouled on the three. Yep. That's Absolutely. another big miss call here down the stretch. It's such a crucial. And no doubt about it, the whistle has gone against their charge shooting under 30%. Lucky to only be down three. It's still a chance to tie. You've got your shooters, all four capable of shooting from three. And now Toledo uses a timeout. Program statement win on the road in South Bend. I think the Irish are going to find a way to get good one at three here. He has a career high four threes to his name tonight. Old reliable, Rex Fluger, the inbounder. Goodwin comes around the double screen. It's not there. For the tie, it's good! Nate Leshevsky drills it to tie it at 55! There is no better reality 
TV than sport. Nate has been ice cold for the season. The biggest shot of the night when you absolutely needed it. No daylight at all. Deadly from three. Now, did he get it off? Cock was oh, delayed yeah. in starting. Uh oh. Cock felt like it was delayed in starting. Which gave it plenty of time. I think that's regardless that that's, that's gonna be that's good. And watch John Mooney. He left from his side of the bench to come over to the crowd across the court to let him know what time it is. Free basketball, Jay Alter. Gotta love it, Jordan Cornette. Nate Lejeski, three of 22 from three on the season before that triple. And it's the only one that Irish fans care about. You know what great shooters have? Amnesia. They forget the last miss and pursue the next make because they know it's coming. The big fella at 6'10 is a specialist, and he knew that one was coming. Notre Dame trailed by seven at the four. They endured a six-minute second-half scoreless streak, but here we are tipping off overtime in South Bend. How did they find a way to come back in this game? Shooters are to continue to shoot. Stay within the identity of who you are, knowing that it's coming. And the Irish did absolutely that. And if you're Toledo, you have to refocus quickly. You controlled this game throughout the night. And yet here you are in overtime. Showing some toughness. Mooney grabs the rebound and is immediately fouled. And remember, John Mooney playing with four fouls in overtime. Front end of the one and one goes begging. Moody's got to settle. A little too juiced. Too much emotion. How can you not be? Too much hype. I, I feel it over here. Toledo ended that second half dismal, ice cold. And they pick up where they left off. Can't buy a basket. Had plenty of times to put Notre Dame away late in that second half. It could not. And the sophomore game continues a career night. It's a coming out party for Dane Goodwin. Jackson scooped to the hoop. Oh, and we're back tied at 57. That lane was so wide open. You could have taken the whole team with you in the Rockets to finish at the layup or get a second chance opportunity. Nobody protecting the goal for the Irish. Mooney in trouble. How about the hustle again? Fluger keeps it alive. Gibbs can't cash in on the Irish. Man, is this fun, Jay Alter. This is what the ACC Network is all about. Are you kidding me? Seven to shoot. Inside, Willie Jackson. Pop. Can't hit. Willie Jackson, ready in his broadcast, said he'd rather score 20 points. Rather score rebound. Get 20 rebounds than score 20 points. Well, he's got a new career high with 18. He has 18 rebounds. He might get 20 tonight. He deserves it the way he's been playing. A lot of contact off the ball. Nothing called. 10 seconds to shoot. Goodwin, the hot hand. Fires, rattles in and out. And the foul goes against Luke Kanapke inside, bodying up John Mooney for the board. John Mooney does not give up on any opportunity to grab a rebound. We praise Willie Jack on numbers, but John Mooney is a walking double-double that brings it on the backboard night in and night out as well. Foul shooting has been a problem tonight. Notre Dame only 6 of 12 from the free throw line. 
And Mooney in particular has struggled. He's 0 of 2. It's an overtime game, and we might not get to 60. And a foul called. It's overzealous defense. What's so funny about that, Jordan, is we came in saying offense, offense, offense. Toledo had come off a game where they scored 112 points, a program best in 26 years. But credit Mike Bray's defense kept them in this game. Shooting. Just trying to grind their way to a win. Keyshawn Saunders makes the first. Both teams in the double bonus the rest of the way. Two minutes left in overtime. Toledo edges in front by two. Fluger trying to change that. Great feed. Mooney can't get the finish, but was fouled. He'll get two. Patient, pre precision passing from Fluger. Alliteration. or some <laughs> celebration if you're a Notre Dame fan right here. As Mooney's able to gather, collect, and draw the foul. On Kanapke. Which is big, because yeah. Kanapke is the only one capable of defending Mooney, who continues. He, he can't make one right now. He's 0 of 4 on the game. And you can see it, it, it's really been frustrating for the senior tonight. But that one's nothing but net. Who do you go to if you're Toledo? Marion Jackson has been a guy who set the table for everybody to eat. He's going to demand that basketball. Well, here he is with 10 on the timer. Got to protect the paint. You know where he's going with it. Oh, pull up three. No good, but guess who? Jackson, a second opportunity. Still can't cash in. 18th rebound for Willie Jackson. Make it 20, and that is a career high. Incredible. What a night. But now you need the win. Clinging to a one-point lead. What a hesitation. The fadeaway does not fall from Goodwin. Toledo's going to be patient with it here. Why not? The clock is their friend. You want to defend the three-point line above all else if you're the Irish. Keep this thing within one possession. But you never know what Marion Jackson is going to do or where he's going to shoot that thing from. Todd Kowalczyk takes a timeout with his team leading by one. And that margin between victory and defeat is so very small. A three-man weave out of the timeout. Ever three-second differential between the shot the clock Irish. and the game clock, and Mike Bray takes his final timeout. Notre Dame, when their backs have been against the wall, they've come up with a defensive possession to give them a chance. And his look right here, it's not aggressive either. It's just letting that offense damage themselves, position. Fighting through a screen, Leszewski who made the shot in pristine position defensively for Toledo to ultimately undo themselves. Notre Dame has struggled finding their offensive identity in the beginning of this season. But defensively, they have been there time and time again, and it's what's carried the day. 20 turnovers for Toledo. If Toledo's able to get out of here with what they've done from the three-point line and 20 turnovers, that is a miracle against a power five opponent who is a dangerous team and what I believe is a tournament team in Notre Dame. Heck, I feel like we're looking at two tournament teams here. Now, Toledo has not been to the big dance since 1980. I think this is the roster that could get them back. This would be a statement win if they can hold on to this one-point lead. Who gets the shot here? 
Moody again. Back door, wide open. Fluger cashes in. Notre Dame back in front with 20 seconds left in overtime. Marion Jackson is going to find a way to get his feet in the paint. He lost the ball. Gibbs fouled immediately. He will get two shots. Growing in November. As you see, you reach, I teach, says Rex Fluger. That's a senior making a play. Defensively, Leshevsky in great position again, riding along. And John Mooney gets the hand in there. Offense hasn't been there for him, but an upperclassman making a play. And that is a home roll for Mike Bray. You see the exhale from the Irish head coach. Jay, it's not over. Even if this ball goes in, it's a one possession game. And Toledo came into the night the second best three pointing shooting team in the country. Prentice Hub checks in after the foul shot. You go for the quick two or the triple here? I think they're probably going to think triple here. Shooting one of six in overtime. For the tie, Jackson off the rim. Notre Dame has it. And a foul comes in with 1.1 seconds left. Somehow, someway, Mike Bray and Notre Dame look like they're going to hold on. Since the 17 minute mark of the second half, forced overtime. And grinded this one out. The Irish survive a Toledo scare. And a shot goes down for Mario Jackson. Wow! We've had it all. It's the only way this game could end. It's the only way that this game could end. Unbelievable. The officials still haven't counted the shot. <laughs> it won't matter. This is a Notre Dame win. This is the shot that goes begging. And Rex Fluger ultimately chases down a loose ball. What a matchup, Jay. Just, you talk about growing in November and games not being important. You tell me this isn't going to change the trajectory for both teams. Both teams should walk out of here with their heads up high. I'm with Mike Bray. Take the jacket off. It's been a fun one. <laughs> Notre Dame survives in overtime. Wow. 64-59 the oh. final. Stay tuned. You'll wrap it all up. All ACC, Dallin Cup, Luke Hancock in the studio. Woo. Wow. And they change it to 62. Like, I've never seen a game like that in my life. Uh, wait, hold on one second. Are we doing? Are we doing something okay? We're done. It's just Moody on that side. Hey, Alex, that was a hell of a broadcast. Sure, we don't want to talk to him because it was that crazy. But all right, I'm shocked they don't want us to talk to him here. Really, they don't want us to have somebody on a court to talk to him after that? I what? I mean. Oh, all right. I'm texting.